Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Welcome again and it's good to see you as we reflect on Allah's names in this series in awe of Allah. Today's name is, is very dear to all of our hearts and very important to all of our lives. But many, many people know the name but actually act upon it in, incorrectly. They don't live the true meaning of this name. I want to ask you a question about this name. The question is simple. Do you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you trust Allah? I want you to be very careful the way you respond. Because everybody's going to say, of course I trust Allah. How could you ask something like this? But if you trust Allah, that means that when you select someone that you want to get married to, and you take the steps and you work hard and so on, and then you find time after time after time, all the doors are closed and nothing's working until they get married to someone else. That means you trust Allah's choice over what you wanted. It means when you have a loved one, uh, a mother, a father, a child, and Allah decides and decrees that their life will be shorter than yours, and He takes them back before He takes yours, that means that you trust Allah's choice, although you would have liked to hold on to them forever. This name has these implications. It means that our trust of Allah is so deep that we view ourselves as his servants, his slaves, and he does with us as he wishes because we trust him more than we trust our own selves. This is the name of Allah, al wakil uh, meaning the trustee or the advocate or the dependable. I gave you some very tough, tough examples in the beginning. And uh, alhamdulillah, Allah's mercy on us is vast. We don't face these decisions or these calamities on a daily basis. But this is the extent of our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we trust Allah, we trust Him recognizing and knowing that everything in the heavens and the earth is under His control and within His dominion and in, within His full knowledge. And actually when you find the Holy Qur'an describing al wakil often you find the name linked to the vastness of, of God's authority and His knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُ الْأَمْرُ كُلُّهُ فَاعْبُدْهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ That to God belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. And to Him return all affairs, so worship Him alone and place your trust in Him. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And your Lord, your Lord is not unaware of all that you do. So you see this verse has a very specific tone to it. It's saying, how can you not trust Allah when everything is His and He knows everything? And so this makes our trust of Allah easy in our, in our daily affairs, in my simple decisions, in my, what, do I go here, do I do that? But it also gives us that, that handhold, that power, that reliance on Allah in the most difficult moments and the toughest decisions of our lives. And the Qur'an uh, speaks to the Prophet ﷺ and speaks to the companions and speaks to us sometimes at the lowest moments of our lives. The Prophet ﷺ had a verse revealed to him in Surah An-Nisa, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And to God is everything that is in the heavens, the earth, and He is sufficient as a trustee. And this word, kafa billahi wakila, comes in the Qur'an as if emphasizing that you don't need anyone else if you have God. Of course we rely on others and we trust on others, but our, that ultimate reliance, that full dependence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient and we need no one else. This trust is not easy. And that's why when I asked you that question at first, do we trust Allah, immediately we say yes. And that's, that's the attitude we want to work to. But it's, it's not a switch. It's not easy. And if we have the courage to see that and to understand that our relationship with Allah is a process, takes investment, takes hard work, then we're going to draw closer to Allah al wakil The concept of tawakkul is tied to faith, is tied to iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us this in the Qur'an when He said, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Then in God place your full trust if you are truly believers. So this, 
Knowing Al-Wakil increases your faith and gives you serenity and peace. Many people never have peace in their lives because they're always trusting their own wits, their own smarts, their own guts, their own decisions. And we're human beings, we're full of shortcomings. We don't know everything in the heavens and the earth. Our, our power is very limited. And so what happens is very quickly, our smarts don't get us to the right places. And the Qur'an tells us, وَيَدْعُ الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرِّ دُعَاءَهُ بِالْخَيْرِ That the human being might wish and pray for something, thinking that it's, it's good or bad, it's the same for them. Sometimes we want something, we think it's great, and actually we're picking something terrible for ourselves. I'm choosing someone as a friend, and that friend is going to take me astray. I want a, a particular car, and God knows if I get that car, I'm only going to take it to the worst places. It's only going to get me in trouble, among other examples. Every one of us is coming today to this session with a problem, with a worry, with a situation that we can't figure out, with, with a family relationship that's gone sour for, for years, and we've, we've tried everything, we've knocked on that door, and it's, it's just not being fixed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al wakil is the only solution for serenity as we face these problems. But He's also the only solution when things are going well, and we, we don't want to lose that faith that we've built in Ramadan. When we don't want to come on the first of Eid and, 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 and after that and go back like we were before. Only by placing our trust in Allah al wakil do we find that success and that serenity. And I'm just going to tell you one story. This story has always really affected me. It's a story of a, of a great and in, an incredible woman that's dear to all of our hearts. It is the story of our mother Hajar the wife of uh, Ibrahim. Uh, Prophet Ibrahim's wife, Hajar, had a son, Ismail. And Ismail was still a, a young boy, and Hajar and Ibrahim had Ismail in very old age. And after not having children for many, many years, and not expecting to ever have children. So Ismail was, was a special gift and a real blessing from Allah. But then, Prophet Ibrahim was ordered to take Hajar and Ismail and go to Mecca before there was civilization there, before it was a city, when it was just a barren desert. And those of you that go to Mecca know that there's, there's no fruits, there's no gardens, it's a very rocky, difficult terrain. So I want you to imagine not just that tough terrain, but no human being around. Prophet Ibrahim takes his newborn son and takes Hajar, puts them there, turns his back and starts walking away. So I want you to imagine uh, Hajar, she says, to Prophet Ibrahim, where are you going? Who, who are you leaving us to? And Prophet Ibrahim was a tough situation. Allah asked him to do it. He, he didn't understand why. He didn't know what the end would be. He didn't know that all of us would go walk on the footsteps of Hajar and, and during Hajj and during Umrah. He didn't know any of this. So he didn't answer. And as he walked away and walked away and, and kept struggling and, and placing that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and emphasizing what he did, at the end, Hajar said, Is it God that ordered you to do this? And the Prophet Ibrahim said, Yes. So Hajar said an incredible line. She said, Then he will, he will never let us go to waste, he will never leave us. He's with us, and she put her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see, Hajar, when she thought maybe it was the decision of Prophet Ibrahim, when she was wondering why, how can you leave us in the barren desert, how can you do this? Once she knew it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was it. This is an incredible station of faith. I'm not saying this to depress you or depress myself. But uh, Hajar worked for this, and she had a special heart. And we should aspire to the station that that we build such a close relationship with Allah that we trust Him and we know that, that whatever He chooses for us is best in this life and the hereafter. I want to give you and myself some practical items to work on this Ramadan. They're very simple, very, very simple. And I'll give you three quick ones to know al wakil this Ramadan and after this Ramadan. First of all, many of us confuse at tawakkul with what is called at tawakkul in other words, we're lazy to study for an exam tomorrow. And so, you know, we're playing video games or goofing off or surfing the net. And we're saying, somebody asks us, what are you doing? We say, oh, tawakkaltu Allah. I trusted in Allah. He'll give me success in, in uh, 
Maitas. This isn't trust, this is called laziness. And so, at tawakkul is that you take every worldly mean, you sweat, you work hard, you go, you strive, you think, you plan, but then after you've done everything in your power, then you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the outcome. If the outcome goes your way, or if the outcome goes another way. So don't ever confuse trust in Allah with laziness, because this is poor manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To not do our part, and claim that we're trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this Ramadan, as we're struggling to better ourselves, as we're trying to make good decisions, don't say tawakkaltu ala Allah and then fall asleep, or go on vacation, or not think, but work really, really hard with everything in your means, in your power, then tra place your trust in the one who has uh, unlimited power and has full control over the heavens and the earth. The other two I'm going to give you are, are just examples of tawakkul. They're really easy. Every morning when you leave uh, the house, I want you to learn a dua. Very, very simple. Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. We'll say it again. Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. The Prophet, peace be and blessings be upon him, says, when you say this dua, when you leave your house in the morning, there is an angel that says, you have been uh, guided, and protected and your affairs are taken care of. Very simple, easy dua, but it's, it's setting your compass for the day, that I'm putting all my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third thing is a beautiful tool uh, for making decisions. It's called dua al-istikhara, salat al-istikhara, the prayer of seeking, uh, you know, God's guidance, if you will. When you're torn in a decision, the Prophet sallallahu has a beautiful sunnah he taught us, to pray two rak'ahs, and then at the end of the prayer, after saying salam, you say a beautiful dua called dua al-istikhara. You can find it online or ask maybe one of your friends that's familiar with it. For example, makedua.com, makedua.com has this dua or other websites. Uh, but the trick is, again, when you make that dua, many people wait for a miracle or wait for a dream. There's nothing in the sunnah about this. The sunnah is that we place our trust in Allah and then we take our worldly means. If you find things facilitated and easy, inshallah, this is a, a glad tiding from Allah that this is the right path. And if you find the doors closing and things becoming difficult as you try, then it's an indication that Allah is guiding you to a better path. So we said work hard. We said say that dua when you leave the house in the morning. And we said make istikhara as a great sunnah for making good decisions. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Wakil, to draw us closer to him this Ramadan and to place trust in him that fills our heart with hope and with serenity and with peace. Until next time, I entrust you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.